This is a shackle. And so is this. So, what's the difference? When do I use this shackle versus this one? It can be confusing trying to understand which type of shackle is best for your application. And when securing a load, if you choose the wrong shackle, it could result in a rigging failure that causes significant damage or injury. So, if you aren't sure when to use this versus this, then keep watching. By the end of this video, you'll understand the difference between the different types of shackles and their applications, and know which shackle best suits your needs. My name is Ben, and this is the Lifting and Rigging Channel. Today, I'll be breaking down the differences between the different types of shackle shapes and pin types, as well as the different materials shackles are made from, to help give you a better understanding of which shackle you should be using for your application. We'll even take a look at some different specialty shackles, so you can be sure that you are using the best shackle for your needs. So, let's get into it. Before we start discussing the different types of shackles, let's familiarize ourselves with the different parts of a shackle and the terms I'll be using to refer to them. This is the bow. It is sometimes referred to as the bale, body, D, or bowl, but today I'll be referring to it as the bow. These parts here with the holes are called the ears, and this part that slides through the holes is called the pin, and this part here of the pin is called the shoulder. These are the terms that I'll be using to refer to the different parts of the shackle throughout this video. Before we dive in though, I want to point out the most important part of the shackle. It is the writing right here, where it says WLL. This is the working load limit. This is the maximum weight of the load that you can lift with your shackle. ASME B3026 rigging hardware requires shackle manufacturers to have identification and or markings on the shackle body as well as the shackle pin. These markings are required to be maintained and legible throughout the service life of the shackle. You should be able to read on every shackle body the name or trademark of the manufacturer, the rated load, and the size. You should also be able to read on every pin the name or trademark of the manufacturer, grade, material type, or load rating. If you not see these markings, do not use the shackle. And always check the working load limit and make sure your load never exceeds that limit. The shape of a shackle's bow helps determine which type of shackle it is and what the shackle can be used for. These are the main two types of bows. Here, you have an anchor shackle, and this is a chain shackle. The anchor shackle has a larger round O shape. The larger bow makes this shackle good for side loading or using multiple sling leg connections. Anchor shackles can be used for side pulling, but remember, Side pulling reduces the working load limit of the shackle based on the angle of deviation from the inline or zero degree position. To see how you can calculate your working load limit based on the angle of your sling, check out this video linked below. This is a chain shackle. Chain shackles, sometimes called D shackles, are D shaped and narrower than anchor shackles. They are designed for inline tension only. In other words, they should never be side loaded. Side loading a chain shackle can twist or bend the bow. So when using your chain shackle, your sling configuration should look like this, not like this. Both of these shackle bow types can be used with three different pin types. You have screw pin, round pin, and bolt type.
screw pin shackles have a threaded end here that can be screwed in and tightened down to the ear like this. Screw pins are quick and easy to connect and disconnect, so they are good for pick and place applications when slings or other hardware are often changed out. One thing you must remember when using screw pins though is to always tighten the pin before each lift. It is easy for a sling to loosen or unthread the pin, especially when using a choker hitch. Because of this, using a screw pin shackle is not recommended for long-term installations. You can use a screw pin with an anchor shackle when side loading or with multi-leg assemblies, but remember to factor in the reduction of the weight load limit. Round pins like this are not threaded. The pin is secured in place with a cotter pin. Round pins are good to use when the pin may twist or be subjected to torque during its application. They're most popular in tie down, towing, suspension, or applications where the load is strictly applied in line. But round pin shackles are not recommended for overhead lifting and they should not be used when side loading or as a collector of multiple sling legs. You do not want the cotter pin supporting your load. The last type are bolt types. Bolt types have a bolt and a nut. You tighten the nut down and then secure it with a cotter pin. Bolt types are the most secure in normal use applications. They remain secure even when twisting or torquing may occur. Also, the nut and the cotter pin eliminate the need to tighten the pin before every lift. So as a result, bolt type shackles are great for semi-permanent or long-term installations. You can also use a bolt type shackle for any application that you would use a round pin or screw pin shackle for. So the main types of shackles you would use would either be an anchor or a chain type shackle configured with either a screw pin, round pin, or bolt. But there are also specialty type shackles for more specific applications. This is a synthetic sling shackle. It has a wider bow, so a synthetic web sling or round sling can lay flat. This allows you to use 100% of the sling's weight load limit. This is called a wide body shackle. The wide body is helpful with high capacity slings. It is important to note that when you're using a shackle with a wire rope, the shackle's diameter must be equal or greater to the diameter of the rope, meaning your rope's diameter can't be bigger than your shackles. So the increased radius of the wide body shackle increases the surface area for a better D to D ratio. It eliminates the need for a thimble eye on your sling and it improves the service life of your sling. And it will also prevent the sling from kinking or bunching around the bow. Next up, you have what's called a long reach shackle. Just like the name implies, you can use this shackle when a longer reach is needed to attach pick points. This shackle can also be used as a bail for lifting thicker products. These are specially designed shackles made for the specific purpose of pulling sheet piling. They're called sheet pile shackles. The last thing to consider when choosing the right shackle is the material it is made of. What it's made of will affect the design factor ratio, as well as other factors like corrosion. Shackles can be made from carbon steel, alloy steel, galvanized steel, and stainless steel. Carbon steel shackles are more ductile than alloy steel and are available in round pin, screw pin, and bolt type. Alloy steel shackles are stronger than carbon steel. This means that you can achieve the equivalent weight load limit of a carbon steel shackle with a smaller alloy steel shackle. By galvanizing a shackle such as this one, 
A thin layer of zinc oxide is added, which helps to protect against corrosion. This is good for applications where you're concerned about moisture. However, you still need to protect galvanized shackles from the elements. Finally, you have stainless steel shackles. These provide the greatest resistance to corrosion and are good for marine applications. So let's review. The most important part of determining what type of shackle to use is to have a complete understanding of the total weight of your load, the type of sling you're using, as well as the type of hitch you're using. And finally, remember to consider the angle of the sling. So, pop quiz. I need to lift a load. I will be doing an overhead lift using a multi-leg sling assembly in a relatively dry industrial setting. And I can expect a significant amount of torque on my shackle. Which of these shackles should I use? In this scenario, I want to choose a shackle with an anchor bow type because I will have a multi-leg sling assembly. A screw pin would not be ideal because my shackle will experience a significant amount of torque. It's an overhead lift, so I won't use a round pin. Therefore, I should be using a bolt type anchor shackle. And since I'll be working in an industrial environment where moisture is not much of a concern, a galvanized shackle should work just fine. Now, I just need to double check that the weight of my load and the angle of my sling fall in line with my shackle's working load limit. If you need more information, or you're looking for more lifting and rigging training, you can click the link below to contact a Mozilla lifting and rigging specialist. There you can also find a full inventory of shackles and other rigging hardware from leading manufacturers. So you can find the best shackles to fit your needs. So I hope after watching this video, you're no longer guessing which shackle you should be using. And you've taken the guesswork out of purchasing the proper and safest shackle. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. If you have a question, drop it in the comments so we can get you an answer. My name is Ben, and I'll see you in the next one.